So, again, women, you are beautiful. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Amen? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I want us to open our Bibles to Colossians 1, 4 to 6. Colossians chapter 1, 4 to 6. If our dignity's blessing can read, please. Yes, please. I read in Jesus' name. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come to you, as it is, has also in all the world, and is bringing forth fruit, as it is also among you, since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. Amen. Amen. Verse 6 says, This same good news that come to you, it is going out all over the world. If good news comes, it needs to go out. Whenever we receive good news, it needs to go out. Whenever we receive a word from God, it needs to go out. Just think about a little child. When a little child is at school and they have good news, they can't wait to come home, right? To tell their parents, mommy, dad, you have good news. And that is how we should do. If we receive good news, we need to go into the world and tell people of the good news. It is not only for us to keep, it is for us to give out. And that is our mandate. That's why we evangelize on the street to spread the love of God, to tell the world about his love and his good news. And we, re we learn from our presiding elder that a good news is like a package you receive and you unpack. So right now, anything that the Lord has told you, you are unpacking it in the mighty name of Jesus. And actually, the best gift you can give to someone is not a physical gift. It's not fun times. It is not going out, uh, partying. It's not vacation. It's not even, you know, krula, cuddling. Hey. It's not even smiling at them just like that. No, the best gift you can give to someone is Jesus Christ. That is the best gift you can give to someone. So if you have never given Jesus Christ to someone, you have actually never given a gift. The best gift you can give to someone is Jesus Christ. And John 13 says that Jesus knew that his hour had come. He was encouraging the disciples, telling them not to be troubled. And Peter said to him in John 13, verse 8, Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part in me. Then Peter replied, okay, then if you have to wash my feet, wash my head, my armpits, wash my whole body, my face, everything. And Jesus said, Jesus was explaining to them that they should do this for one another. So if we receive good news, it's not that you literally need to go and wash people's feet. I don't think I will be washing everybody's feet. But if I have to give you Jesus, that is actually what he was talking about. Give Jesus to them so that they will be transformed from their head to their shoulders, to their breasts, to their legs, to their feet, and everything will be cleansed. So Jesus was talking to his disciples, and when we go to John 14, 1 to 6, which is our, also our main passage, is Sister Blessing can read, John 14, 1 to 6. Yes, I read in Jesus' name. Let not your heart be troubled. Mm. You believe in God, believe also in me. Yes. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you will know. And the way and where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me amen 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 you know so we know that when jesus was talking about the mansions he was talking about his presence and his presence is a dwelling place in his father's house there are many mansions so in god's abode there is his presence and his presence is particularly for you and if you think about a home 
It's a place you want to go to. It's a place of comfort. But in this case, the home is a dwelling place of God. So today I declare that whenever you go home, you will take your presence, God's presence there. And it will be God's dwelling place. So that anything that is in the house which is not supposed to be there will flee because of your presence. Amen. If I don't know if you guys have watched the movie uh, Home Alone before. I've watched it over and over and over and over. And it's about a small boy whose parents, they actually forgot him and he was home alone. And he came home and he was like, Mom, Dad, Uncle Jack. Is anybody there? <laughs> That's how I do sometimes when I'm home alone because our house is quite big. And if I'm home alone, I tend to hear some voices. So I'm like, hello. <laughs> hello who's there <laughs> i'm just talking out loud i'm filling the room the house with god's presence i'm filling it with god's presence i start praying filling it with god's presence making sure that all the doorsteps are covered with his blood are covered with his blood if you get home make sure you carry god's presence to the house because where there is not god's presence the house is not a home it's just a building and in Greek, actually, the house means abode, what I said earlier. Uh, if you read Ephesians 2, 20 to 22, Ephesians 2, 20 to 22. And I read in Jesus' name. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. So Christ is our cornerstone, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. The chief cornerstone. The Father's house, God himself. It's built on Jesus. Jesus is the cornerstone of it. If the Bible says, if a builder builds in, in, in vain, if the builder builds without God, it's in vain. Because if God is not building your house, it will not stand. There is not a foundation. There is not a cornerstone holding the building together. And this father's house, it's built on Jesus. It's built on his, his cross. It's built on his death. It's built on his resurrection. It's built on his grave and on his ascension. That's the cornerstone we have. And... This song, it was when I read this, it just laid on my house. Maybe my husband can help me sing it. Uh, on Christ the solid rock I stand. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other grounds is sinking sense all other ground is sinking stand on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground Then it says, all other ground is sinking sense. All other ground is sinking sense. All other ground is sinking sense. May his presence to get today go before you. And may you not dwell on any other ground but on Jesus. If you dwell on the philosophies of this world, you will sink. If you dwell and stand on the ways of men, you will sink. If you dwell and stand on your own understanding and your own reasoning, you will sink. But if you stand on Christ, the solid rock, you will stand. 
you will stand. And I came to tell you that there is a promise for you. And Jesus is a promise keeper. He is a promise keeper. He is a promise keeper. And I came to a case study which really touched my heart. It's in John 4, 46 to 54. John chapter 4, 46 to 54. Forty-six to fifty-four. And I read in Jesus' name. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Mm. The noble man said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then, the, then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household. This, is a, this again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. Amen. So in this passage, Jesus was on his way back to Galilee. And Galilee is the place where he was raised up. And he, he knew that if you go to your own hometown, people don't honor you as if you are out of your own hometown. And I think most of you can relate to that. If you're in your own comfort zone where people know you, yeah, the honor is sometimes less than if you go outside. And that was what Jesus was saying. He knew that they were relying on signs and wonders. And as he was going on his way, someone heard of him. And this man was a general official. So he was a noble man. Everyone knew him. And when he heard that Jesus was coming, he knew that he had to go and find Jesus. Because he believed that Jesus had a miracle for him. As a matter of fact, his son was dying. And the passage says that this is the second extraordinary miracle Jesus did. Jesus did a lot of miracles. But this was the second extraordinary. The first one was him turning water into wine. So when he met him, he told him that my son is dying. And he has to come with him. And Jesus said in 48, that you never believe unless you see signs and wonders. But the man continued to plead, come with me to Carpanium before my little boy dies. And Jesus looked him in the eyes. Say Jesus looked him in the eyes. I want you to look in your neighbor's eye and see how that is. Look straight into their eye. Eyeball to eyeball. Look into their eyes. Look into their eyes. Jesus said, look into my eyes. Jesus made a connection with him. Jesus made a connection with him. You know, some people, when they are not living their lives on truth, but on lies, it's difficult for them to look in your eyes. But people who know that they are living in truth can look in your eyes. I can look into Edmund's eyes. I can look into John's eyes. Blessing, Domina. I'm not shy. Jesus said, look into my eyes. He made a connection with him. And then he said, go back home. Jesus gave him the way. Go back home. Go back home. That's the way. Go back home. I'm giving you a route. Go back home. I'm giving you a destination. God. God is home. God is his father's house. Go back home, he said. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is not a way. He is the only way. He's the only way to the father. He's the only way to Yahweh. So he said, go back home. He said, go back home. And he said, go back home now. So there is a command, there is a direction, and there is a time frame. 
And the man didn't say, oh, but I have stuff to do now. No, he obeyed. He obeyed. And this is the good news. This is the good news. His presence. He said, go back home. Go to my presence. Go to the promise I have for you. He is the only way. He's the only truth. And if God is the end destination, there needs to be a navigation, which is Jesus. When you put an address in your navigation in your car, for instance, and you are sometimes stubborn, you're like, oh, but I've been here before. So let me just... Die vrouw zegt, ga rechtsaf. Jij denkt, ik ga wel linksaf. Volgens mij is dat sneller. Do you know what happens? The voice, mostly it's a, it's a female voice. The voice says, ga terug naar de route. And it says it quite aggressively. That you're like, hey, take it easy, man. Ga terug naar de route. Keer je om. And that's how Jesus does with us. He's not, he doesn't speak in that manner. But he tells us, no, come to my path. Lead the way. Stay on Jesus. Stay on Jesus' road. Don't dwell on your own philosophies and your own thinkings. No, Jesus. Don't dwell on, oh, but back in the days we used to do it like this. No, Jesus. That's why I love ACC. Because the more you know Jesus, in ACC it's all about Jesus. So if you want to hear more, it's Jesus we're giving you. And in, in fact, Jesus is all you need. Jesus is all you need. If you hear Jesus, you have heard everything. So he said, go back home now. And then when you read, he said, I promise you, your son will live. The way, the truth. The truth is, I promise you, your son will live. The truth is, I promise you, you will be healed. The truth is, I promise you, I will make your name a great nation. The truth is you are blessed and highly favored. The truth is you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The truth is you are my son and my daughter. The truth is I'm going to prepare a place for you. That is the truth. The truth is the word of God. So if you do not read the word of God, you will never hear the truth. The truth is not what people say about you. No, the truth is the word of God. And the Bible says in John 1 that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the, the word was God. Talking about Jesus. That is the truth. The truth is not just a book we read. No, the truth is a person. And his name is Jesus Christ. So that's why we say in ACC, eat the word. Eat Jesus. Live by the word. Don't live by bread alone. Colossians 2, 13 to 14 says, And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he had made a life together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he had taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Amen. Jesus has nailed it all to the cross. All the lies of the enemy, he has nailed it to the cross. The Bible says that the devil is the father of all lies. That's why when your mind speaks lies to you, you need to counter it with the truth, which is the word of God. So he said to him, go back home now, the way. He said to him, I'll promise you, your son will live the truth. And you want to see the life, I guess, right? In 53, he says, Then the father immediately, immediately realized that it was at that very same hour that Jesus spoke the words to him, Your son will live. And indeed, when he got home, when the father got home, the son was alive. The son was alive. Tell your neighbor, the son was alive. The son was alive. And when the son was alive, the man, the general official, asked his servants, at which hour did this happen? And they explained it that it was at one o'clock in the afternoon. And that was exactly the moment Jesus said to him, go back home. I promise you, your son will be alive. So sometimes before we even find out about our good news, the Lord has already done it. The Lord has already done it. You may be here sitting and waiting and thinking, oh, when is my good news coming? The good news is already there. Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life. 
but you are yet to find out about the truth. It made me remind myself of when I was getting into medical school. I was at school, but I was doing a different course, and all my colleagues, student colleagues, they already received the note that they have passed the medical exam. And I wasn't home yet, so I called my mom, because I was like, I want to know before I get home. I was excited, and I knew in my heart that it's done. So I called her, I said, Mommy, have you received the letter? And she was like, she was even eating on the phone. I said, Mommy, can you go to the post and get the letter? She took her time. She was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going. She took her time. I was getting agitated. I was like, no, I want to know. Before I get home, I want to know and hear the news. And lo and behold, the news was a good news. It was a good news. And I was on the streets jumping. I even wanted to roll on the ground. I even wanted to jump and jump even more, but I didn't want people to think I was crazy. But that is what good news does to you. Before you even get home, before you even get home, you will hear a good news. Before you get home, you will hear a good news. Good news is on your way. Tell your neighbor, you, you will hear good news. You will hear good news. Tell them well, you'll hear good news. Yes. And what I like about Jesus being the life is that we ourselves, we didn't have life. We were dead in our trespasses. But because we met Jesus, because Jesus said, look into my eye and made a connection with us, because Jesus loved us so much that he himself died for our sins, we received life. We received life and we are alive in eternity we are alive in eternity, and this is the good news we need to go out and preach to the world. John 3.16 tells us that this life is an eternal life. And Romans 6.23 says that this life is a free gift of God. It's the Zoe life, which is the life-giving spirit. So he said, your son will live, and indeed, his son lived. And what I like about this miracle is that when he received his son's healing... It says that all his servants believed. It says that his whole household believed. This is what God is going to do in this house. When we hear our good news, our whole family will believe. When we hear the good news, all our colleagues will believe. When we hear the good news, all our friends will believe. And they will all be saved in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, God answers prayer. God answers prayer. What I like about Jesus, when we go back to John 14, uh, 6, and I'm going to end, it says that when Thomas asked him, yeah, we don't know where you're going and we don't know how. And people tend to always say, oh, Thomas, right? But not this Thomas. People always tend to say, oh, Thomas. But in class, you always have someone who asks questions and everyone is like, oh, it's weet je toch wel. But when the answer comes, you realize that you didn't understand it in the first place. You realize that you needed that Thomas question to realize that Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life. And that Thomas, often at times, they get the higher results because they ask questions. People that do not ask questions, mostly... It's either they're very smart or they don't even realize they don't understood it. But he asked the question and God gave him the answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And when Jesus started saying and giving him the answer, he said, I am. Referring to God. The I am that I am. The I am that I am. The I am who I am. I don't need an explanation. When Moses saw the burning bush, he came close and he said, I see a bush burning, but it is not consuming. That is how your life will be. Life situation may burn you. They will give you a wound, but you will not be consumed. You will not be consumed by life situation. You will not be consumed by the attacks of the enemy because that fire is in you. So we asked him, God, if I go, what should I tell them? God said, tell them I am that I am with swag. I am that I am. People ask you, who are you? I am that I am. 
if people ask you, who are you? Who? Who? I am that I am. Because Yahweh lives in me. That was the first name God gave to them. To tell them who he is. He said, I am that I am. Yahweh is his name. Jesus never talks about himself without referring to God. That's why he said, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. And I am the life. So my prayer today is that your home will be a house of the presence of God. Where he will dwell. And that you will hear good news only. And that you will believe in your heart that the good news is settled. Because the I am that I am is with you. If you're looking for the way, it's through Jesus. If you're looking for life, it's through Jesus. And if you're looking for the truth, it is through Jesus. May God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you. And as you have heard this, this word, that you will put it into practice and be blessed in Jesus' name. Let us all be on our feet. I want us to pray a few topics. And we all have heard that in his father's house, there are many mansions. His presence is there. He's preparing a place for you. And in Exodus 13, 21 to 22, it says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night from before people. I want us to pray that God's presence will go before us. Wherever we go, God's presence will go before us. So that anything we'll do, we do is not our own efforts, but it is through the, the spirit which God has given us, through the power God has given us, and through his anointing. So pray that wherever you go, God's presence is going with you. Just open your mouth and pray.